Christ, the same yesterday, and today, and forever. The Church of Jesus Christ presents Pastor and Evangelist Pete Rowe. Praise the Lord. All right, children, I want to welcome you today. And we're speaking now out of the book of Colossians chapter 1 to something that was well pleasing to the Holy Father. And we hope it's pleasing to you, if you will. Turn with me to the 12th verse of the book of Colossians chapter 1. And children, I believe without a shadow of a doubt that if ever a man that fulfilled the first and greatest commandment, Jesus did, because he asked them one time when one of them told him, said, Good Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus asked him, said, Why do you call me good? For there's none good but one, and that is God. So now that's something for us to think about, because I believe we all know he was the good shepherd, and he's our master. He said, You call me Lord and Master, and you say, Well, for so I am. Now, I know it's a mystery to a lot of people, but now it's not hid if we're willing to open our mind and our eyes to the Word of God. God can help us. And children, I'm no wise using scriptures as something to willfully want to deny people's salvation and all. I don't do that. But I do know without a doubt that God wants us to come under the knowledge of the Son of God so we can grow into perfection. And you better believe it's because of who Jesus is <clears throat> that separates people. But nevertheless, he can't deny himself if we deny him. But if you'll notice here in verse 12 of Colossians 1, Bible said, Giving thanks unto the Father, which made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son, in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Now, listen to the next verse. Who is, I mean, that's plain, the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Now, the Bible declared him to be the image of the invisible God, which is the Holy Ghost, invisible spirit. Well, and if you go back to Genesis 1, God never made man in the likenesses, likenesses of two or three different images. No, sir. God created man in his own image, in the image of God. In Genesis 1, 26, and people say, well, then who was he talking to? When he said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Well, God was speaking concerning the flesh of Adam and every person from then on were to be made in God's likeness. So every male child that's born is created in the likeness of God, but every man has a form of hands, he head, ears, a body, and we're a male child, see? And of course, at the beginning when God <coughs> made Adam, <coughs> then he took the woman out of the man and made a woman. So to sum it all up, children, God created man in his own image, and that us was just representing the word and the spirit, and also you and me, because when a, a man and woman get married and have children, well, their baby is made in their image because of God's image. Anyway, if you'll notice here, Bible said, Who is, speaking of Christ, the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Now listen to verse 16. For by Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible, invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by Him and for Him. See, children, there's no way He could be a natural human of, of Adam or even of Abraham or David as far as the flesh because this person that was made flesh was a creator. He was in the world. The world was made by Him. Now, you know He had to be more than just a 
an ordinary man. I mean, if you looked on him back then, he would look like anybody else. But understand him, because his words were so powerful, you'd know who he is. All right, watch. Now, the Bible said all things were created by him in verse 16 and for him. Well, listen to verse 17. And he's before all things. And by him all things consist. And he's the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. Now listen to this, that in all things he might have the preeminence. <coughs> Verse 19. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Now, what fullness are we talking about? Not just fullness of grace and truth but of the Godhead bodily. Every drop of God Almighty is in him. And that's why when he came out of that tomb and appeared to them, he said, all power, thank God, is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now, if it pleased the Father, surely we believe in his Father, that in him should all fullness dwell, well, he ought to please you and me that Christ has our fullness. Now, we need to get a little more into that. Go to Colossians chapter 2 to you people that's maybe just accepted the Lord or you want to learn more about Him. Go to verse 6 of Colossians 2. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk you in Him, rooted, built up in Him, established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Now, the reason he's warning you, the next verse, is because most of you teachers today, they're not pleased as a father was pleased, that in Christ dwell all fullness, so they separate him. Now, watch your Bible. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, listen, and not after Christ, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you're complete in him, which is the head of all principality, thank God, and power. Now, why wouldn't that want to please us? I mean, you've got a man here, Paul, that's in the Bible. And all these leaders out here that's going against him, he's still in the book. So children, God wants His people to understand these things. Now, when it called Him in verse 15, who is the image of the invisible God. Well, let's go a little further. because Now, Paul was a wise man in this understanding because he once persecuted it, but he had a heart God could deal with. So if you will, go with me to the book now. <clears throat> Let me find it here myself. Philippians. The book of Philippians. And I believe it's chapter 2. Now watch this. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Listen to it. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, this is the kind of mind you, you need. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Look or let me get it again, who being, this is speaking of Christ, in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now equal is same, not less. Equal with God. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Now, when he did this, he come from the form of God with the same form though and made it as Hebrews 2 said, a little lower than angels, the seed of Abraham. Brought that body into this earth through that little virgin birth by the name of Murray. How did he do it? The Holy Ghost implanted that seed in her. See? Which was God's image. His word. And he stayed in her body for the full months of childbirth. And then when he was born, 
He was born a counselor, a mighty God, an everlasting Father, a Prince of Peace, Emmanuel. And here's what it said. <clears throat> Verse 6 again. Who being in the form of God, <clears throat> thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took on himself the form of a servant. That's when he lowered himself. A little lower than angels. And was made in the likeness of men. See? And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Now here is the resurrection of him. Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him, thank God, and give him a name which is above every name. What is it? That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, when he got that name, so named of the angel, he was born Christ our Lord, already Christ. And they gave him the name Jesus, which made him definitely not separated, but Jesus Christ. And when he arose from the dead and appeared to the eleven and told them all powers given unto me in heaven and earth, now children is God is my helper. They didn't know a whole lot either. <clears throat> but when he took them on that mountain and opened their understanding in Luke 24, he opened to them the great mystery of God that had been kept secret from the foundation of the world. And that was a revelation of what the name of the Father and of the Son and Holy Ghost is. Now, we've got people today, they don't even know what the Father's name is, so they'll say, well, it's either Yahweh or Jehovah or I Am or somebody. But children, when you study Bible, it's the same name the Son had. And when Jesus opened their understanding to the Scriptures, He said, Thus it's written, Thus it behooved Christ to suffer. And He did. Remember? He said, These are the words that I've spoken to you while I was yet with you, that all things which are written in the law, in the prophets and Psalms concerning me, He fulfilled it. And when He opened their understanding, He brought them the revelation of what the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost is. Now, Matthew 28, 19, Luke 24, 44, Acts 2, 38, there's no difference in it. But Peter is the one that had the keys of the kingdom. And Jesus, when he got them on that mountain and opened their understanding... He revealed what the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is. And if you'll notice Matthew 28, 19, when he appeared to him and said, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. It's given to me. And told them, Go teach all nations and baptize them in the name. One name. It didn't say plural. It didn't say names. It didn't say plurals of it. But one name. Baptize them in the name of the Father. So that meant the Father had a name. And of the Son, not separate, but and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And teach them to observe whatever, whatsoever I've commanded you, the apostles. And lo, I'm with you. Now, why would they change it on the day of Pentecost? They didn't. Because when he opened to them that name, it was Jesus Christ. He come in the Father's name and said, it's written to me to fulfill it. And what did he say? He told them, thus it's written, thus it behooved Christ to suffer, rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins be preached in his name among all nations, beginning where now? At Jerusalem. Acts 1, he told them, tarry there till you be endued with power. Well, after the Holy Ghost come, Peter stood up that day, having them keys and they said, men and brethren, what shall we do when they'd realized they'd crucified the Lord? Now, you know well as I do, Acts 2.38 is the beginning of the church. Because God added 3,000 souls to the church that day. It started on the day of Pentecost. And if you read it in your own Bible, 
Everywhere in the book of Acts that the disciples baptized, they baptized in the name, not saying the titles of the people, but they baptized in the name of them titles, which was the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, which is Jesus Christ. And that's what has caused the division. Now listen, it wasn't a little people's fault, but we had men come together especially in 325 A.D. and formed up the Nicene Creed and they wanted to represent God in three distinct persons and they put Peter not only as the head of the church but also they changed the glory of God and separated him into three distinct persons saying Father, one God, Son, the second person, God, and the Holy Ghost, the third person, God. <laughs> well, whether you like it or not, they may be same sus, but they'd be three gods. And don't work with the Lord. The commandment of all, the <clears throat> first one was, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God's one Lord. You're never going to get the Jews to believe in more than one. And neither would you get these disciples to speak contrary to what Jesus said in John 10, 30, I and my Father are one. So see, what needed to be understood is how did God get into the world? He was made in likeness of man, but how? It was the Holy Ghost that brought that seed into this world, planted into Murray, and the Word was made flesh and dwelled among us, and we beheld His glory. And children, the birth of Jesus Christ. I know it's told a lot during Christmas holidays. But that brought God into this world. Now, in Acts 2.38, when Peter stood up, when they said, Men and brethren, what shall we do to be saved? He told them, Repent. Be baptized. Every one of you, go read it out, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And if you'll read there, they that gladly received His word were baptized. And the Lord added daily to the church such as should be saved. And what did he tell them though? They that are near and they that are far off. That's us Gentiles, far off. But children, everywhere you read in this book of Acts or anywhere in the Bible, you won't find them baptizing outside his name. You won't find it in there. And that's why when Peter said, Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, I know there's a division among our own people, but children, he never left Christ out of this. He never left Jesus out of it. You can't either. The full name of the Godhead is in Jesus Christ. It's that simple. You can't separate it, even though people do. Paul wasn't crossing Peter. Neither was uh, Philip or none of the rest of them. When they was commanded to baptize in the name of the Lord, they knew who the Lord was. But God had to choose Peter. He chose him for the purpose of bringing it to the world. And he was the first man that stood up at Pentecost. And children, when you read it through this book of Acts, you're going to find out everything they did in word or deed. Same for us. Do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Because that's where the power is. That's where the deity is and everything of the Lord. Now, I'm going to close here in just a moment, but I need you to go with me to the book of 1 Timothy in your own Bible, chapter 3 and verse 16. Now listen to it. And without controversy, there's no argument to this. I can't change it. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Listen to verse 16. God, G-O-D, was manifest in the flesh. Could you get any plainer than that? It was God made flesh. The Word was made flesh. See? Justified in the Spirit. Seen of angels. Preached unto the Gentiles. Believed on in the world and received up into glory. Surely we know that's Jesus. Now you say, why does it really matter? Because children, he said, I'm not going to give my glory to another. I'm the first, I'm the last, I'm the beginning, I'm the ending. We can't separate him as the world does. 
And God's a bringing His people to this knowledge of Him so we can grow in favor with Him. But He can't cross His own word. See? And He commanded that everything they do in word or deed do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And of course, they did that in the book of Acts. And all through the Bible, every time God began to reveal Himself, He did it in His name. Now, listen to this right quick. 1 Timothy, I believe it is, chapter 6. And verse 14, listen, or verse, I'm sorry, verse 12. 1 Timothy, chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. And he told Timothy, I give thee charge in the sight of God who quickeneth all things and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he ain't God here yet which in his times, and this is where you're at, God's are bringing this to us. In his times, he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only, see, has immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor, power, everlasting. You listening? He said, charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things do enjoy. Children, you better believe that this is that great hour that God in His time is going to show who's the blessed, the only potentate, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords. Now, Nathaniel told Peter, or Philip told Peter and them, we found him, the Messiah. And did you know even Nathaniel said, Thou art the King of Israel. Jesus' children never cease from being a king. But he had to spend a time of 33 and a half years subjected to the Holy Ghost for salvation. Why? Because he had to be made lower than angels for suffering. Children, listen. When he came into flesh, you better believe he honored his father and said, My father's greater than me, but not greater in deity as far as in the omnipotence of him. Honey, listen. He said, I'm the Lord, I change not. He was made lower than angels so he could suffer in the flesh and he was manifested for that purpose. So what did he do? He subjected himself to the will of the Spirit so that he could die on that cross. The Spirit didn't die in him. It came out of him. But whose Spirit was that? Jesus cried, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? See, everybody thinks because of our teachers today, they think that the Father was up there looking, turning his head and this and that, but it was leaving him. Jesus said, He that sent me is with me. My Father's not left me alone. The only time the Spirit ever left that body was so he could die on the cross. Now think about this. God made Adam out of the dust of the ground, so there was a form of a man laying there. But when did the man become alive? When God breathed the breath of life in him. Jesus, when he was birthed into the world, he said, I live by the Father, I live by the Holy Ghost. That's what he was living by. And he honored that spirit. And the only time he could die was when he was on that cross willing to give up that spirit. And when he bowed his head and died, children, then the body was laid in Joseph's tomb. You know that's true. For three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And thank God when that spirit came back into him, he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So where's the power at today? It's in Jesus. Now, let's go to Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7 because this is the second 
and final coming of the Lord. Verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds. That's in the future. And every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. And John said, even so, amen. Now listen to verse 8, Jesus speaking. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. See? Saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Now, children, you can't have two Almighty's. You can't have two first. You can't have two last. Either Jesus is all this or somebody's a deceiver. And it definitely ain't Him. Now, go to your Bible here in verse 10. It's Revelation 1. I was in the Spirit, John said, on the Lord's day, and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And he told him to write to the churches. Now, what happened here when he turned to see the voice of that one that spoke to him? If you read verse 17, John said, When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. He laid his right hand up on me saying, Listen, fear not. I am the first and I am the last. I'm he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I'm alive forevermore. Thank God, and have the keys of hell and death. Now, close me out with Isaiah 44 in your own Bible here. In verse 8, listen to it. Isaiah 44. Let's just start at verse 6, if you please. Isaiah 44, verse 6. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and His Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, see, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. Who shall, and who, as I shall call, and shall declare it, set it in order for me, since I pointed the ancient people, and the things that are coming and shall come, let them show unto them. Now listen to verse 8. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time, and have declared it? You are even my witnesses. And here it is. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. Now children, Jesus fulfilled everything written of him. And there's no need of looking for another Messiah because he's the only hope for all of us. So I see my time about up. Write us in your prayer request. Come out and be with us. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. We would like to thank you for joining Brother Rowe and invite you to continue with him in outreach. Your prayers and support will be deeply appreciated. If God leads you to help in this ministry, please send your contributions to the Church of Jesus Christ, Post Office Box 283, Baxter, Kentucky 40806. And may God bless you.